I'm going to end on a quick fire question. So I've got five questions that I'll just rattle off and we'll just go uh, what, you know, what you think the answer is. So uh, what was the first fish that you caught? I'm not sure. I think, <laughs> it had well, fins. I, I'm pretty sure it was a stickleback. All right, that's a good uh, one. But, uh, in, in a net, because that's how I started. I remember fishing with tiddler nets. And my dad used to take me to Liso's Park in Hale Zoe, where we'd fish for tadpoles in the spring and red butchers, as he called them, which were, you know, the male stickleback. Yeah, bags. beautiful coloration on them. And we used to catch them. I mean, sadly, you don't see so many sticklebacks now. I see more in Norway than I do in hmm. the UK. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure it was a stickleback. The, the, the first fish on rod line almost certainly was a gudgeon from, oh, okay. from the Staffs Worcester Canal where I used to do a lot of my boyhood fishing. They were, uh, well, I was going to say they're a first fish for a lot of people, but I don't think they are now. I think probably, uh, you know, maybe a few years ago they might have been, but not, not so much now. Uh, not, with, uh, not, not with the rise of commercial fisheries. I mean, no. one of the big regrets that I've got is that, you know, kids can go out in a day and catch 10 species. Mm. Yeah. Um, but none of them look like they should for most commercial fisheries. They're, then they're not glowing and bright and crisp, crisp edge to the fins. They don't, the tench don't look like tench. They look slightly off color. And yeah. Grey, aren't they? And, uh, yes, they are. And, I, and that is the downside. There's good, there are upsides of commercial fisheries, but, but if there's a downside it is that the actual representation of the species is somewhat disappointing. And of course it's all the fun of the fair. You know, I mean, I was I was in my twenties before I caught my first carp. Hmm. I've yeah, been fishing since the age of three. <laughs> I was I was eighteen before I caught my first tench. Yeah, not as yeah. It's a bit, I kind of take it for granted a little bit now, and I think, uh, like you say, with the gudgeon, a lot of the mini species get um, sideline. I I haven't caught a rough for Jesus donkey. I'd look, I'm, I'm on a mission, a personal mission to catch her. I haven't caught one for so many years. But I'd love there's to catch a rough a few, again. There's still a few on the seven down on the Mucky Meadow. Okay. It was overrun with them at one time, the Mucky Meadow at Beaudley. But like you, you mentioned Crabtree earlier on. I was, you know, transfixed by Crabtree. Uh, I've always loved comic and um, cartoons anyway. Um, and I was a huge collector as the lad of American Marvel comics. And... You know, my son now, we're collecting them again. I've got the bug again. I've always enjoyed <laughs> that form of art. And of course, Crabtree was, it was, it was a Bible to me. Because many of the fish in Crabtree, I'd never caught. I was never likely to. I remember, you know, reading the thing about Bream. Um, and, you know, them putting, putting stuff into balls of clay so it would get to the bottom and, Bread was a bait we never fished with. We only ever used maggots. We were rough ass brummies, you know. We used to buy, <laughs> I can still remember the, 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 the wax, the smell of the wax keep nets in the tackle shop and, and, and the maggots in there and the quill floats. And it was a magic world and Crabtree was magic. And it was magic because it, it was slightly surreal. Yeah. No, it was, it, uh, I've but, seen but, some of the cartoon strips from it and yeah, they are. Um, they are great. They're kind of like a bygone era. It's not something that had worked now, unfortunately, I don't think. No, well, that's what, I'm t that's what I was talking about before, you know, yeah. about things being in their time, Jack. You know, yeah. They, 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 I'm sure there are things that happen now that people, it has the same response because it... it, it It'd be a YouTube video now, wouldn't it? Yes, it probably would. Yeah. And, you know, I do think there is still room for analog experiences. People still buy books why because there's something about seeing something in print that is quality and quality is always quality but there is so much choice now but I think what we need to do sometimes is when I was young and growing up in fishing my enthusiasm was off the scale and from what I see of the modern generation it's still there they're still interested, aren't they? By, yes, it's, but it's inspired by different things. And as much as I might want to decry, you know, the modern world and, and, and you know, wallow in this sort of um, nostalgia, and I do sometimes, don't get me wrong, I'm as bad as anyone else, but I also recognise that, you know, it moves on and that it's not right for me to decry 
other people's passion and somehow say it's a lesser version than my own because I knew all the really good stuff. I just don't know, Jack. I'm older now, so I don't see the world through an 18-year-old's eyes anymore, unfortunately. No, well, I mean, I'm nearly 30 now, so I'm... Uh, I'm wow. Again. <laughs> I know, <laughs> yeah. You're old man. <laughs> I know, I am. I uh, feel the cracks coming. Um, uh, Favourite fish? Oh, gosh. Um... I, I don't, I can't name just one. I don't, I don't think I can name just one. Um, okay. <laughs> if I was really pushed, I might surprise you actually uh, with this. Uh, my kids are just coming back in, Jack. So okay, we'll just let them make loads of. Yeah, noise. I've basically got these four quick fires and then we're done. Yes, hang on. So yeah, so no worries. I'll just tell them that I'm doing this, and then they won't bang. Your All right, buddy. Guys, I'm, I'm just on a conference call being recorded, so um, try not to slam any doors. Thanks. Sorry about that. Yes, that's all right. So, um, had... fa favorite fish? Yes, I knew you were going to ask me that. Um, I, I don't think I can name one. If I had to. I, you know, I, I've given different answers to this. That's the <laughs> uh, and, and that the truth is that it's always been the one I'm fishing for at the time. Um, I think probably pike. Oh, okay. I, That's I, a good I, one. I, I, the thought of a forty-pound pike dropping over my landing net rim is mind-blowing. I, I, I can't think of another fish that might cause my legs to turn to jelly quite as much i i mean i don't know how big it was it was certainly over 25 but i filmed i filmed a couple of big pike in my time and when you you know when you see them they're like units they're like submarines aren't they and there is something quite impressive so to think that they could be a pike nearly double that um would would be pretty incredible to see so i'm I'll, I can forgive you for that. I think pike's a good choice. Uh, well, it is today. I mean, some people think it's chub because I've always, and I do genuinely love chub fishing. Yeah. Uh, I, I really do. But I think I do spend a lot of time, when I, when I get fishing time in the UK now, I'm never happier than when I'm lure fishing or fly fishing for pike, perch. And that yeah. I just, I, good. I caught my first pike on a fly actually a few few weeks ago at Rutland. It was great. There weren't big, there were any little jacks, but it was great fun just kind of stripping these little flies and they're going out there and they were cracking. Yeah. So it made me think, you know, double figure pike would be uh, would be great fun on the fly. Well, I've I've actually had I've actually had uh, two thirties on fly. Wow. And you know, me and myself and Mick, probably about ten to 15, 20 years ago, that period, we had a real period where we were pike fly fishing a lot and i i mean i go all in on everything i'm got a time of flies and you know um but i loved it and i yeah. i've got a, a massive respect for pike yeah and they're so delicate as well they're these powerful predators but you know if you don't look after them they can they can struggle a little bit right um I, I'm, I suspect you might struggle to answer this one as well then i was gonna say a favorite venue yeah, I'd, well, I mean, I've just completed um, a thing called Fisherman's Country, and I finished the edit literally pretty much the day that my house, my cottage by the seven was sold. And it's a celebration. It's, it's basically seven or eight years of mine and mixed fishing diaries from about 2012 to 2019 on the seven and its tributaries. And it, it, it was a fitting thing to do, really, Jack. You know, there's a nice way to bring to an end um, that sort of chapter in my life, I suppose. Uh, the Seven, I grew up by it, really. It was the first proper river I fished as a kid. And I lived by it most of my life. So I, it would be difficult. But of course, now I live in Norway and we manage and we're lucky enough to own part of this magnificent salmon river called the Gowler. So I feel hugely protective towards the Gowler and I'm involved in some of the conservation aspects of that that go along with salmon fishing. So it, it would probably be split between one of those two uh, and the canal. I've got to say, I, 
I love fishing the canal, the Stew Pony Canal, the Staffs Worcester, around Stourbridge and Kinver, where I grew up. Uh, it's like going into another world. It might be on the edge of urban chaos. I think that's part of the appeal. Yeah. You always felt safe and it was always such an adventure that I do love fishing the canal, mate. Still do. There's a bit of a juxtaposition with canals, isn't there? Because like you say, they're urban, but then you've got these corridors into the countryside as well. So, um, yeah, I can definitely That's agree very with well you. put. You should yeah. have answered that question instead of me. <laughs> Your answer was miles better than mine. Well, you know, I don't, I don't want to uh, knock you off your pony, uh, Matt. Um, have you got, well, I, again, I suspect I know the answer to this one as well, but favourite method? Um... Yeah, I'd, I'd say fly fishing because I think it is the most beautiful way to fish. Yeah. Um, so, and, and there's always massive room for improvement. Um, yeah. I, I remember someone, one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard people say, and I've heard it quite often, um, is you'll talk to a fly fisherman about worm fishing for salmon and sea trout, and I'll say, lot of skill in worm fishing, you know. No, mm. there isn't. You could teach someone to worm fish for salmon and sea trout in about 10 minutes, but you couldn't teach someone to fly fish from properly in 10 minutes or 10 hours or 10 weeks. No, so no. I've always regarded that as a completely stupid thing to say. And if you're one of the people saying it, please be ashamed of yourself <laughs> because I've spent a lifetime getting frustrated with fly fishing and how <laughs> difficult it is. It's so bloody hard sometimes. Oh, um, no. But you know, to me, that's part of the appeal. If I play, um, if I play a video game, I always do it on nightmare mode. I never do it on easy. Um, and I, I'm a completionist. I want all the trophies. And, you know, I think there's an ism in everybody. And there's an ism in me which wants to experience it all. And I, I won't live long enough. No one ever will to, to experience everything about this wonderful sport of ours. But put it this way, Jack. I've experienced as much of it as I possibly can and I, d I don't want to be derogatory about the other stuff. I'm just quite, I'm happy if I'm ledgering, I'm happy if I'm spinning, I'm happy if I'm drop shotting, I'm happy if I'm watching a float. Trotting a float takes some, some whacking. Yeah, that's my favourite. Down a current takes some whacking, I tell you. Yeah. That's right up there. It's a good um, method. You know, stop asking me to name favourite things. <laughs> All right, well, my last one isn't a favourite, but the, the last question then before we go is, have you got an angling hero? Yes, uh, I've got a few, actually. Um, my grandfather, Dave Massey, who was my mum's dad, was a fine all-round angler. He was a working class man, um, grassroots guy, very, very clever guy, who could fish just as well for salmon and sea trout and you know trout as he could for course fish he, he won matches carpeted the house um won stuff to <laughs> decorate the house in the days when people were very poor through his course fishing but he was an equally fine game fisherman so he's still my great angling hero my dad um is my hero full stop really um but he we've been together all through my fishing life and it you know, we've always fished together and, and you know, because of that, he'll always be my fishing hero. Of people more latterly, um, a guy called Stuart Allen, who's uh, Stu I met back in the 80s and um, we've been friends ever since. We fished all over the place. He inspired in me the desire to go and catch bigger fish. Um, he was one of the old dyed-in-the-wool specimen hunter types, Stu. And tremendous fisherman, the best watercraft I've ever seen in any angler. Um, and, you know, I can go on from there. I mean, it, 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 Peter Stone was a huge hero of mine. And when I was a kid growing up, you know, I, I read Crabtree and then I borrowed books from our local library. Um, and of course I read Walker, as everybody did. But I preferred Pete Stone it's back to the same thing that I told you about. Stoney was very down to earth. Was Walker was Walker was quite cantankerous and incredibly bright. Was, was Peter Stone? Sorry, was Peter Stone the old boy who used to turn up on Total Fishing every now and again? Yes. 
yeah okay yeah. I, the, the name and, just ring a bell um, uh, he wrote a book called Bream and Barbel and wrote various books about his exploits on the Thames. I never thought I'd meet Stoney. I remember reading his books, which I borrowed from Bridge North Library, along with some of Walker's classics, you know, like Drop Me a Line, which is utterly brilliant. But what you've got to remember with Walker is, in, in terms of his many inventions, for example, the Arlsey bomb was invented on Arlsey Lake by Richard Walker because the leads they used at the time were like coffee leads and, and bullet leads. They weren't very aerodynamic. He built the first big carp fishing nets. He, he was famous for having cracked things at, um, uh, you know, uh, on Redmire with, and having caught the record carp, Clarissa, of course. And he was equally fine angler with pioneering um, what was then the fledgling stock trout scene on reservoirs, he invented flies like the Sweeney Todd, I think was one of Dick Walker's patterns. And Walker was unquestionably a highly intelligent, brilliant, brilliant angler. But Peter Stone was a brilliant man. And he had heart. There was nothing twee or false or up his own arse about Stoney. And I'm not saying Walker was, unfortunately I never actually met him. But there was a slight arrogance about Walker's writing, which wasn't there with Stoney. Stoney always seemed to me to be a bloke that I could go fishing with and not be overawed, and yet yeah. learn incredibly much from. And as luck would have it, I managed to meet Pete Stone one day in Oxfordshire. Uh, and I, I couldn't get over it. I mean, this man had been my one of my fishing, albeit never having met the bloke, one of my fishing mentors. And I met this warm, generous, beautiful man who I instantly just like that. Yeah. And, the, you know, he taught me something. I could never get over how much respect stony displayed towards me and how he would be incredibly i'd say oh i was like touch fishing pete and i did this thing like, really did you really and he'd lean forward did you really and and then he'd ask me a question and i'd think hang on this bloke's forgotten more about fishing than i'll probably ever know and here he is intently interested in what i've got to say uh, and that was a remarkably humbling experience and Frankly, a mark of greatness. I, Stoney I, the man was better even than the bloke that I read about. And, you know, we talked about Walker. And one of the greatest things that was ever said about me, the only compliment perhaps that's really ever meant anything because it came from him. Well, there was two things he said. There were two things he said which are probably the only compliments I, I remember. The no. one was that, um, it's all right, we had a bit of a ping then off my computer. So That's all right, buddy. <laughs> there were two things that Pete said, which will live with me forever. The first one was that someone asked him towards the end of his life for the Barbell Society, what was the best day's fishing you ever had? And he said, it's when I went with Matt Hayes fishing for Rudd at Elstow. So number one, there was that. They then asked him in the same magazine, who's the best angler you've ever met? And he said, me. And somebody said, not Walker. He said, no, 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 no. <laughs> he was a much better angler than Walker. But you've got to remember that Walker lived in a time when things were there to be invented. Yeah. Now, I, I think he was wrong about that because Dick Walker did so many great things. But the very fact that he was prepared to say it about me, mm, I can't tell you, mate, what that meant. I don't agree with it, but the fact that Peter Stone said that about me was, well, I never thought that would happen. It goes back to what we were saying earlier about when you meet, um, you know, particularly with the job that you do and, and what I do, I get to meet a lot of people and you get the, the, the kind of... Uh, the perceived perception of what they're like and what they're like, and then behind the cameras there can be a different person. So it's always reassuring when you do meet someone and they are a genuinely nice human being so it's a, a nice thing to have oh mate he was he was 
an absolute topper. He was twice the man that I thought he'd be, if not more, and an incredible angler, an incredible countryman, but more than anything else, I loved him for his character.